All right, there we go. <laughs> hey guys, Foxy Fern here, and welcome to the first stream of probably a few of animating a quadruped run cycle. We're doing a run cycle instead of a walk cycle. I just uh, thought it'd be a little more interesting just because we've already done a walk cycle on this channel and because I thought it'd be fun. So that's what we're doing. And here today we have this friendly little ox guy and you can download him for free. I tried really hard to find a decent free quadruped rig so that you guys can do this too if you want. Um, I haven't like animated animated with him yet, but he seems pretty good. Just the little futzing around with the controls I've done. Uh, the only downside I think is going to be potentially when we get a bunch of keyframes on him, he's maybe going to like not play back in real time. It looks like maybe it's already a little choppy, but hey, Tom, welcome to the stream as usual. Glad to have you here. All right. So I dug up some video reference for this guy because as I always say, reference, 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 unless you've done something a million times before or, you know, maybe you're working on something that really doesn't have video reference. I don't know off the top of my head what that would be because even some like fantastical creatures or or cartoony creatures like you'd still want to look up reference <clears throat> to get a, like an idea of what you wanted to do, right? So this guy, we've got, uh, I, I did actually search for ox and not a lot came up, but we got bison stuff and I think bison is going to work just fine. So I couldn't really decide here what I wanted. Oh my gosh, I have so many. We need to narrow this down, but let me just give you an example of what we have here. Some of these are like <clears throat> slow motion, excuse me. <coughs> ah. Some of these are just like slow motion. Like this one is not quite slow motion, but it's not quite full speed either. So I do like having some slow motion stuff. Oh my gosh, I just, I don't want this to default to QuickTime, but also it's annoying trying to tell it to open up there. This is real time, although they're running a little bit faster. You can see that their gates are a little faster in this other video. Like this guy is a bit more of a trot. He goes, he's got like f all four hooves at the ground at, at one time here, whereas these are running a little faster. Once again, I just found these at Getty Images, as you can see by the watermark. I think it's a great source for finding high quality video reference as an animator. Obviously I can't use this video in any sort of production type of thing, but as far as using it for animation reference, it does just fine. I don't care if there's a watermark on it for my reference. What I want to decide right now is like what kind of gate we're going to do. I think this is actually pretty good here, but it's in slow motion. So it's not a good one for me to determine my speed the length of my animation on. I like this one because the camera is steady versus all the other ones are kind of following them. So it's a good way to see stuff like, like see his head bobbing up and down here. We can't see the bottoms of his hooves. So I wouldn't want this to just be my only video reference, but we have other video reference for that. But you can still get a pretty good idea based on like the shape of his legs here as they come up off the ground of uh, what the hooves are probably doing when they when they come off the ground. But so this guy's walking too slow. I definitely want some kind of gallop or trot. So we will keep this one. That's a good real time video. Again, another slow motion, but this is the front view and we can't fully see all of his feet again because like he's in the snow and which also is going to affect the way that he runs but once again I liked this as just another perspective so that we can see what's happening from the front this one probably isn't the greatest they're going a little slower than I want in this run and I think we have 
enough other videos, so we're going to close that one down. So this one, he's got one foot on the ground while he's in a passing position. Kind of like this one. But his back feet are still on the ground, so I think he's going a little slower. Oh, wait, no, they're not still on the ground. My bad. This one is also kind of the slow motion, though, again, isn't it? Yeah. So I think I'm going to close this one out. And we're going to use this guy as our basis for timing. I guess this, this side view one is also real time. So that could be a better judge of the speed. But OK. So let's get ourselves just a cycle to start with. And I might change this on my own. Uh, as we start to see what it looks like as far as like cartoony versus realistic with this guy um, I think since all I'm doing is like a run I'm conflicted I guess because I I don't do a lot of cartoony stuff so maybe it'd be a good idea for me to try my hand at it but at the same time I've had a lot of people like uh, really like the fact that I'm doing body mechanics stuff because there's like it's easier to find videos on cartoony animations than on body mechanics it seems so I might kind of like go somewhere in the middle where I'm gonna try to make it like a realistic uh, bison run from the base of it and then we might just push it a little more and so it'll still feel like a bison, but I also don't want it to be like the Uncanny Valley, right? Where if you have this hyper-realistic motion on a cartoony character, it's going to feel really weird. But let's go ahead and get this for our basic cycle. Now, as far as my start and, and my loop pose, you know, if I'm working on a game and I'm doing quadra or a biped I start with passing pose for blending purposes now on a quadruped I actually have never animated a quadruped in a game before so I'm not sure what the appropriate pose would be on the the animal I mean okay I take that back I have animated quadrupeds in a game but they were like really uh mishmashed kind of spore like quadrupeds But their passing position, it's like, oh, which passing position, right? So maybe maybe we just start with, like, hmm. Let's see. Oh, maybe we'll just do like I would do in a game where we're going to start with the, the front foot, front left foot on the ground, passing position. So this would be, like, our first pose here. All right, so we're going to go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, sixteen. Okay. So about sixteen frames. Okay. So we'll squish this guy down to sixteen frames. And we're gonna see how that goes. So part of the reason I, I chose to do a quadruped for this stream and still a very basic motion but not quite as basic as a walk is because I've been seeing a lot of people on like the animation Facebook group that I'm a part of and other places like on Reddit and whatever people will do quadrupeds walking running etc and the biggest mistake I see is that so often the front two legs feel like a different animal than the back two legs now, I don't know why that is a common mistake. I It would be hard for me to know exactly why that is happening without seeing what people's processes are. But what I'm guessing is that what people might be doing is just animating the front two legs like this. And then they're like, okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to animate the back two legs and just like offset it or whatever. And then if you're not animating the animal as like a whole entity, it is going to feel like two different creatures. So 
it's definitely important to be animating the whole animal all at once, which is a little more time consuming because they've got four legs and, and whatnot. Um, and you know, when you, when you do look at these videos here, the front legs do move differently than the back legs. So that's okay, but it should still feel like the pairs of legs belong to the same creature. Or the other thing that I that I've seen, I saw someone make like a, a camel animation, and it was a really well drawn animation, but the camel was actually running, walking like a dog walks. And if you go look up videos of a camel, they walk very differently than than a dog does, or run. I think it was a run, but um, so yeah, video reference is important, guys. Especially if you've never animated what you're animating before. And I can tell you, I have not animated a bison running. I think I did like a horse walk once back when I was in school. Uh, and outside of that, I haven't really animated quadrupeds. I did a dragon thing in my demo reel, as some of you have probably seen. But that was not a quadruped. <laughs> So what I am paying attention to here, we're, we're looking at this, this front guy. We've got his left front leg is on the ground and his back two legs are off the ground and it looks like his hooves are curved behind him a little bit and he's got this front hoof here. So we're just gonna go ahead and pose that out. Now, usually I like to work in uh, stepped when I'm blocking out an animation. We might do that just for the first couple poses on this, but since we're doing a cycle, I don't stay in sept very long because, oops, let's turn that back to reference, because we want to see how it's moving, like the speed of it and everything like that. So, oof, that's not pretty. So why is this... Okay, so what I don't like about this here is I want his knee thing to go forward. How do I get it to do that? Like, I want this. I want to animate the knee part. Don't tell me this person messed up the IK stuff. Oh, God. What do these do here? Oh, no. That's just... Foot roll, foot roll. Oh, this could be bad. So this is the shape I want. <sighs> okay. Yeah, this is not, this is no bueno. Like, here we go, there, that's the shape that I want in that foot. But now look at how gross this is. Oh no, you guys. Maybe this rig isn't going to work out as well as I thought. This is going to be like a shitload of counter animating. Ah! Why is there a... There's a layer in here that says not working. Why would... Why would somebody leave a layer in here that says not working? What is that? It is some facial stuff. Okay. That's uh interesting. Um Okay. My feedback for this person is they did not rig the front IK very well. So I guess what we're just going to have to do is counter animate this control here. I thought that was going to be like our our scapula control. Front rump? Wait. Oh, God. Why is this called front rump? The, the, the rump is not on the front. Whatever. Okay. All right. So this is our scapula control, I guess. And this is what we're going to have to animate to make his uh, knee go forward like this. All right. 
It'll do, I guess. This this is the problem with using free rigs. I want to use free rigs so that you guys can access this kind of stuff if you want to. But it's really infuriating <laughs> sometimes. All right, let's get this show on a road. On the road, not a road, the road. Uh, left view. Okay, so I, I do like to animate and ortho or pose in orthographic when I'm just starting out. Star Blast, Batch 3, you are a great teacher. The way you teach, it's really good. I'm a beginner in animation. I've been doing it more than two months. This is very advanced for me, but I love to watch. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, and like as far as like skill level and everything, I'm just kind of doing the animation that I enjoy doing but you know starting out it's like i didn't have any viewers so if there's something more basic that you want me to do sometime by all means let me know um but as you said you can there's always something you can learn right like even as a beginner uh it's very important to understand the use of video reference right so like no matter what you're doing even if you're doing a bouncing ball exercise you still want to use video reference and you want to analyze that video reference and understand, okay, why is this ball bouncing this high? What is, how long is it lasting in the air? You know, like a beach ball versus a bowling ball. How are those going to bounce? Well, the best way to understand that is to watch and observe either online or to get a, a beach ball or a bowling ball and drop it yourself. Be careful with the bowling ball though. You know, don't want you to get hurt, but yeah. And, you know, we're probably going to adjust this a bit as time goes on. But let's get that. He's got the rear up a little. And the other thing that, that you'd want to do on these is, like, there's an element of stretching and compressing. So if you see his, his body here is stretched. And then as his hind legs are coming forward and his front legs are backwards, you can see it compress. So... You know, back to our animation fundamentals, stretch and squash. It's even happening in this bison here. And don't worry about the tail for now. That's going to be a thing that I do at the end. So we will animate it, but not at this time. His hips will probably not be too much side to side right here because his hind legs are kind of together. But we will rotate it down just a little there. This is uh this is a challenge for me too. Like I said, I haven't done a quadruped cycle since I was in school, which was a long long time ago in the galaxy far far away. And I don't know how well I'm going to do. <laughs> it is 1 a.m. here in Australia, but I had to see the live stream and it's great so far. I do enjoy your content. Well, thank you so much. Much love from Australia. It is, I believe, if I'm correct, it is Australia on a t Tuesday, right? So it's just, you're earlier than me instead of later. Whereas, like, India is ahead of me in time zone. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you hanging out. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream so far. Let's see, so this is pretty much the comp or the stretched, oh, uh, not quite, actually. You know, that's honestly probably what I should have done for <laughs> my start and end poses, is do the stretched and compressed versions. Arr. You know, I might, it's not too late, I might actually do that. We're gonna save what we have here, and I'm just gonna shift it. So we're gonna start with the most compressed pose, just cause I think that'll be easier from a body standpoint. So that's gonna be right foot on the ground. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. So our stretched out pose is here, which is six frames before what we have for our starting pose. So let's do 
oh, I could do my fancy little trick that I taught in my graph editor video. Now that I need to at this point, because we don't have that many keys, so it's pretty easy to be precise when we're dragging. But what we could do is just go plus equals six, and then we don't even have to count. All right, this is not the proper key here, but I'm going to use it as a starting point. Oh man, look at it guys, isn't it so good? <laughs> isn't this the best quadruped run cycle you've ever seen? Oh boy. Okay, on that note, then let's find our stretched out. So we've got, oh wait, that was supposed to be our stretched out. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking here, his leg is coming forward. A little more than I had it in this pose, so. Suma Amdas says, I just want to say never stop. You are doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> this is a struggle right now. And I'm afraid to press play because I know what it's going to look like. Let's, let's, let's see what it looks like. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for starters, actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Wee! <laughs> um, yeah, let's, uh, just gotta keep, keep massaging it, you know? Okay. So the first problem here is I compressed a lot more with the back than I did the front, and I want this to be somewhat even of a compression between the two. So let's... Do this at 2.5. And oh, yeah, this didn't even get compressed at all, did it? Oh, why is this still? Oh, I just like went way too far with this. So that went up to positive three, and this went to negative seven. So let's try negative three. Okay. Whew. Quadrupeds, man. This is tough. I mean, when the timeline filled with keyframe, how you remember that keyframe is used for the movement or something like that? Ah, uh, I see what you mean. That is a good question. Um, when I like when I'm getting the basis. The basics of my animation <clears throat> going, I try to use as few of keyframes as possible for that very reason. So, for example, even though, like, eventually these are all going to have very separate keyframes, I'm trying to keep it very simple so that I can change the timing around a bit. And then once I get it to a place that I like it, that's when I start, like, putting keys on a bunch of different frames. And my best advice for that is getting used to using your graph editor. Uh, because if you're just like looking at all these keys on the, on the timeline, you don't actually know what they're doing. But if you look in your graph editor, you can actually see, oh, this is moving in Z here. And it's like, oh, this curve doesn't quite look very nice because it's going up and then down and it's not got a nice curve to it so then you can start tweaking this and maybe it would oops maybe this would come back a little bit to make it more of an even motion and stuff like that so yeah at at some point once i'm past like my blocking stage i tend to use a graph editor a lot more than the timeline so that i know wh what keys belong where hopefully that's helpful but yeah try to keep your blocking stage in as few keys as possible. Okay, so this is the point now where I'm gonna start putting these on uh, infinity so that I can shift my keys around. The walk cycle and run cycle I treat quite a bit differently than um, than like 
a uh, action piece or a storytelling piece because we just want all these curves to work seamlessly together. Again, we are going to definitely make sure that our feet are all moving at the same speed and that'll be pretty soon here. But for now, I just want to try and get these planted for the right number of frames because technically the foot isn't like actually moving in in world space you know if we weren't doing this on a treadmill it would be zeroed out here but since we're doing a loop we want this to be just oops linear so that way when we actually uh translate his control forward in a linear fashion since it's moving at a constant speed that means the feet are planted at a constant speed as well. Whoops, that's not the right one. There we go. So now you can see he's perfectly linear. All right, let's try this again. Gonna save my file now that we had that scare. Okay, so this guy is hitting uh, they don't have to be like the same exact values when they touch. They just need to uh, be moving at a constant speed when they're on the ground. So this one, he starts at 30.724 and ends at negative 14 so we'll do plus 14 oops ah okay oh my god i'm having troubles here let's try this again so you know what we're just gonna make this a nice 30.5 so 30.5 plus uh, 14.813 right, we're gonna do 14.5 okay so that makes it a nice 45 units that the foot is moving on the ground so let's see if we can do that with this one too. So it touches the ground here. We'll do 18. And then it picks up at negative 20. Well, that's not the same at all. Let's, we want it to at least be somewhat close. Like it doesn't have to be exactly the same, you know, 30.5, but let's, let's have it be close. So let's have this be 28. And then this should be uh, negative 17. Did I math that right? Way we can find out. Minus equals 45. I did math it right. Woohoo. Okay. So what I want to do here to get this in between pose is, let's see, one, two frames. So we'll go middle mouse. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing this frame and I'm middle mouse clicking to copy the frame. So then we go one, two, and we put that there gonna turn this into linear and this into linear so that way we have our key here and we can save it there as well and now these go linear then we can delete this key so that it loops and huzzah all right so those two feet are on the ground at the proper speed so now let's get the back feet. 
moving at 225 <laughs> technically meters per second, but that's obviously not right. Uh, units per second based on the size of this rig that is not properly sized. So if we just do this and make this linear, it looks like, oh, it's not quite right. Rip. This is why it's easier when you have your, your walk or run speed figured out before you start working and then you just end up matching it to whatever that is. So like in, in my game, it's like three and a half meters per second or something. So you don't even have a choice of how fast the character is moving. Uh, in any case, I think that is a good stopping point. So thank you guys for joining me today, or thank you for watching this after the fact. I appreciate both, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.